Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at trigonometry and in this particular case we're going to look at missing angles. So if you've already seen my video on missing lengths, which is definitely the one that you should have started with, you'll have seen this side already, which is when we talk about how we label the right angle triangle and um, what we need to know about the soccer toa. So if you remember all that and you're happy, just skip along to have a look at some of the examples we're going to do. If you're a little bit rusty or you haven't seen this before, definitely watch this because if you get this bit wrong, the whole thing um, is ruined and you'll get no marks. Okay, so let's get cracking. So with trigonometry, just like with Pythagoras, this is based on right angle triangles and we can always identify that with our little square here. Uh, where it's slightly different, with Pythagoras you need to know two lengths to find out the other length. With trigonometry you need to have one length and an angle and that will enable you to get the other length. But you can also work out missing angles. To do that, you need to know what two of the lengths are to work out the angle. But we need to be able to label our triangle first. So the longest side here, which is opposite the right angle, that is always called the hypotenuse. And it's the same no matter what. And these two sides change depending on the angle here. This symbol here, theta, it just means an angle. So this side is opposite the angle, so that's why we call this side the opposite. And this side here is next to the angle. Another word for next to is just the adjacent. And the other way to remember the adjacent is it's always in between the right angle and the angle. So if I was to change that and I was to put the angle theta here, this side would still be the hypotenuse, it's still the longest side and it's still opposite the right angle. However, this side is now opposite the angle that we're given, and this side here is the adjacent because it's next to that angle but also in between the right angle and that angle. So depending on the angle that you've been given depends on which way around the adjacent and the opposite go. And that is crucial you get that right, otherwise everything else, even if everything else you do is bang on the money, you will get no marks. Okay. This is the next thing that you need to know, is your Sokatoa. So your O is just your opposite side, your H is your hypotenuse, and your A's are your adjacents. And the S, C, and T, you might have seen on the calculator, are your sine, cos, and tan. And the reason you need to remember these is because it's how you fill in these triangles. So some people are just happy to remember Sokotoa. If you remember that, that's absolutely fine. I know when I was younger, I struggled with these two getting them modelled up. And that's why I've included these two little sayings here that might help you to remember this. So the first one is this. Skiers on holiday can always have the occasional accident. Or another one you can have is sun on head causes a headache take one aspirin. So it's just a little way to help you remember. doesn't matter which one you use, you might even have your own one, you might have been told a different one by a teacher, absolutely fine, but all you need to remember is your Sokka Toa and be able to therefore fill in these triangles here. So here's the first one, So, and as I said, the S stands for sine theta. Theta is just the angle, so don't be put off by that. And O is the opposite and H is the hypotenuse. And then we have your ka, so cos theta adjacent and our put on use. And the last one, tan theta, O and A. Okay, we're going to use these to help us work out the missing angles. So, let's get cracking. So if you have seen the missing lengths video, and I definitely recommend you start with that one, as I said at the start of the video, the first few steps are exactly the same. I have two lengths and I'm after the angle. So just like before, I'm going to label the two lengths. So there's my angle. This side is opposite that angle, so that is the opposite side. And this one here is in between the two angles next to it, so that's definitely going to be the adjacent. So the triangle I'm going to use, let's go back to this one, is going to be the bottom one here because I have the opposite and I have the adjacent so I'm going to be using that one so I'm just going to rewrite it very quickly here and obviously this is what you'd be doing in the exam is writing this triangle out showing the examiner what you're doing awesome so if I'm after the angle the angle theta remember theta is the angle is there so I'm going to cover that up 
And that tells me that tan theta, which is what I've just covered up, equals the opposite divided by the adjacent. So what I'm going to do next is just fill in what I know. So I have tan. The angle theta is represented by x in this case. You probably could keep it as theta. It's absolutely fine. But we might as well use x as that's what's used in the question. And that equals the opposite, which is 8 divided by the adjacent, which is 10. Now, if I just do 8 divided by 10, obviously I'm going to have 0 0.8. Now, there's no way that angle can be 0 0.8. And the reason for that is, is this is tan x. What you need to get is x on its own. To do that, we need to do the inverse of tan, which is very simple to do. And this is the only thing that's different to finding the uh, missing lengths is the inverse of tan. Instead of just pressing tan, before you do that, you'd press shift and tan, and you'll notice there's a little minus one that comes up. So tan minus one, that's the inverse, and that means it gets taken over to this side and removed from this side, and then it's just eight divided by 10. So if we type that into our calculator, so shift tan to get the inverse tan. Now you can use your fraction button if you want, and just put the fraction eight over 10, or you can just do eight divided by 10. It's entirely up to you how you do it fraction button or just the divide and all we do is press equals there we go 38.659 that looks a bit better doesn't it so 38.6598 etc etc now of course if the question says round to the nearest whole number or one degree or three significant figures whatever obviously round it to whatever the question asks i'm just going to round it to one decimal place um, for the rest of these these questions so the first decimal place there is six i look at the next number which is five that tells me to round it up so if i was running to one decimal place it'd be 38.7 degrees okay that was the first one let's have a go at the next one so again, I've been given two lengths, I'm after the angle. So I'm gonna label my two sides. This side is the longest side, it's opposite the right angle, so that is the hypotenuse, probably the easiest one to spot. And if I want this angle, this side here is opposite, oops, is opposite, so that's your opposite. So I go back to my three triangles at the start. This one here has the opposite and the hypotenuse, so that's the one I'm gonna be using. So I'll just draw that out. So sine theta, opposite, and the hypotenuse. Excellent. And of course, again, I want the angle, so I'm going to be covering that up, which tells me that sine theta equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Awesome. Let's fill it in. So I have sine and my angle again is just x, and that equals the opposite, which is 11, and the hypotenuse, which is, in this case, 16.5. Again, I want to get x on its own. So just like with the tan, I'm going to press shift, in this case, sine, to give me my inverse. And then it's going to be 11 over 16.5. So again, you can use a fraction, in fact, I'll use a fraction button this time just to show you how to do it. So it's just a fraction and then 16.5. Don't forget to close the bracket though, just in case. And we're left with 41.8103, etc., etc. And again, I'll round that to one decimal place. So the A is the first decimal place. One is the next number. So I round down 41.8 degrees. Coolio, and last one on this particular page, two sides, and I want the missing angle, label them, be careful this time, the angle is here and my 90 degrees is here, so opposite the 90 degrees is this one here, so that must be the hypotenuse, and this side here is in between the two angles, so that's my adjacent, and going back to my three triangles, this one here has the adjacent and the hypotenuse, so I'm going to be using that one which I should have sketched out. Cos theta adjacent and the hypotenuse. And if I want the angle, I'm gonna cover it up. So cos theta 
equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Let's fill it in. So cos theta, and again the angle there is x, equals the adjacent, which is 22.5, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 31. And just like with the other ones, I want to get rid of the cos from this side, so shift cos to get the inverse. So x equals inverse cos, and again, use the fraction button, or just the divide button, either one will get you the right answer. So 22.5 divided by 31, and we get the answer of 43.46, blah, 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 blah. Always worth writing the, a few of these out, just in case you do make a mistake with the rounding, the examiner can see that you actually can get it, get the answer, you've just made a, a bit of a mistake. So one decimal place, six tells me to round up. So 43.5 degrees. Excellent. So there's those three examples. Um, there's no other way you can come up. Obviously, you've only got three um, functions, so sine, cos, and tan. Um, but they could come up with some slightly trickier uh, questions. So let's just have a look at some of those. Right. So here we go. We've got our man on a ladder against a wall again. This time I'm after an angle. So let's read the question. A six meter ladder, so the ladder is six meters, is leaning against a brick wall. There we go. The bottom of the ladder is two meters from the wall. Find the angle from the floor uh, and the ladder. So it's already labeled here. Excellent. So there's my uh, right angle triangle. I'm gonna put my little 90 degrees in there just to help me identify these sides. You can draw a little mini diagram here if it helps you as well. Never a bad idea. And we're after that angle there. So let's label these. Opposite the right angle, so that's the hypotenuse. In between the two angles, that's the adjacent, so I'm going to be using cos. So I'll just draw that triangle. There we go, just a quick rough sketch. So cos, adjacent, and the hypotenuse. And again, I'm after the angle. Well, that's an awful theta. There we go. I'm after the angle, so I'm going to cover that up. So cos theta equals the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Let's substitute that in. Cos, again, the angle is just x here. And the adjacent is 2, the hypotenuse is 6. So let's do the inverse cos of 2 over 6 to find out what x is. Bring back said calculator. And 2 divided by 6, or use the fraction. So we have uh, 70. 0.528, etc., etc., and again to one decimal place. Five is the first decimal place. Two tells me to round down, so 70.5 uh, degrees. Excellent. And the final one. So a car is on a ramp. Here's my little diagram of a car, looking good. The ramp is 2.5 meters high, so I can put that in there. And the ramp is 12 meters long, so the ramp there is 12 meters long. Work out the angle between the ramp and the ground. So that's what I'm after here. I'll just call it X again, we've, got, we've used it all the time. Now you might notice there's not a right angle triangle here, so this is a case where you'd need to just think about it, and in fact you can make a right angle triangle quite easily just by drawing a line straight down there, and of course that's still going to be 2.5 meters because it's the same there. And then we have our triangle. So again, you can just draw a little mini sketch of that just to help. So that's 12 meters and that was 2.5 and we're after the angle there. So label it up. Opposite the right angle is the 12, so that's the hypotenuse. Opposite the angle we're given is therefore the opposite. So we're going to be using sine. So sine theta opposite hypotenuse. Again, I want the angle. So sine 
theta will, e will equal the opposite over the hypotenuse. So sine the angle we've called x again equals the opposite, which is 2.5, divided by 12, which is the hypotenuse. Excellent. So don't forget to do your inverse sine. And let's see what we get. So inverse sine 2.5 divided by 12, and we have 12.024, etc., etc. So to one decimal place, the two tells us to round down, so it's just 12.0 degrees. Okay, guys, there we go. Missing angles using trigonometry. Hopefully that helps. Just be careful. Label in your triangles. Make sure you pick the right one, sine, cos, or tan. Make sure you close uh, your brackets if you're using, um, obviously, the inverse there so you don't get into any problems. Um, and obviously be careful when you round your answers. Hopefully that helps, guys. Thanks for watching.